Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. The Nikon Z6 and Z7 are still creating a stir. The Nikon Z6 was aimed at the Sony A7 Mark III. The Nikon Z7 was aimed at the Sony A7R Mark III. So, a lot of people have been asking, what do I think is the better camera here? Uh, for example, Z6 versus A7 Mark III. Let's start with that one. So, we've got the Z6 at 24 megapixels. We've got the Sony A7 Mark III or Sony A7 III. I don't even think Sony uses the Mark nomenclature. Uh, and, and people are wanting to know what is the difference. Where, where do the advantages lie in which camera? So let's get into it. First, we've got better body seals. Advantage Nikon. We've got uh, the weather sealing, professional weather sealing. We've got a magne magnesium alloy material and weather sealing from Nikon that we've come to expect from Nikon. Excellent weather sealing. As Nikon says right here, extensive weather sealing. The forecast is it doesn't matter. Extensively weather sealed against dust and moisture, as are the Nikon Z lenses and the mount adapter FTZ. No need to baby this camera, they say. So they say, and they also start by saying, like the D750. So there you go. Weather sealing advantage Nikon. Next up, better EVF. That'd be my number two, I guess. 3.6 million 3.69 million dots versus 2.35 million dots so as nikon says a pure viewing experience absolutely stunning 3.6 million dot electronic viewfinder with nikon optics so advantage nikon as they say oh what a view an ultra high resolution quad vga display the third advantage the third reason to buy the Z6 over the A7 III is a better LCD, 2.1 million dots versus 912, uh, 921,000, 3.2 inch versus 3 inch. So that's a 3.2 inch tilting touchscreen, as Nikon says, composed with crystal clarity on the large 2.1 million dot display that tilts for easier high and low shots. I don't know if this is 0.3a or 0.4. I guess it depends on how much weight you want to give it. But they do have a better touchscreen setup, better, fuller touchscreen implementation. So what we're looking at here is, as Nikon says, a touch of genius, an intuitive touchscreen control for navigating menus, adjusting settings, reviewing shots, selecting focus, and even shooting photos and videos. This is one area where I will take Nikon's setup for this any day over Sony. I like Sony for a lot of reasons. Their um, layouts for their menus is not one of them. Next two points, I guess that'd be five and six, HDMI uncompressed video output. We got 10-bit 422 N-Log from Nikon, advantage Nikon there, and a higher bit rate, I guess that's 0.6, on 4K recorded internally. So that's 144 megabytes per second uh, versus the 100 on the Sonys. So again, advantage Nikon. The next point would be the XQD cards. Now this is debatable and you could almost argue this both ways, but technically XQD is a better standard, newer and more high tech. It's a faster media card, it's about 400 megabytes a second versus about 300 for the current fastest in SD. However, I've also made the case that personally I would rather have a pair of SDs at 300 than the single XQD at 400. But for this point, it is faster and more advanced and it will support down the road the uh, Compact Flash Express standard that's coming. The next point in Nikon's favor is the time lapse. We got built in time lapse here. You can basically, as Nikon says, you can travel through time. 4K time lapse, travel through time, shoot up to 9,999, full resolution stills using the interval timer and zero shutter vibration. Then combine them into a 4K movie with third party software. Or create time lapse sequences right in the camera with exposure smoothing and extended low light metering range. Great for star trails and light painting. Pretty cool and something you're not going to do. Uh, at all or so easily anyways on the Sony's this next point where I'm going to give Nikon the advantage again is uh, it's debatable I guess uh, but I think the ergonomics and the grip and the uh, just usability of the body uh, again back to I guess the word ergonomics um, is is definitely in favor of the Nikon's large deep grip for balance handling uh, comfortable ergonomics thoughtful button placement and an easy to use GUI that's a graphic user interface um, and as Nikon says a mirrorless you can hold these are uh, a lot of people have had this, this these complaints against Sony in the sense that um, it's almost like a brick 
that's made uh, by an electronics company that takes pictures. Whereas the Nikon, um, Nikon's been building great ergonomic cameras for years, and they know how to do it. They're built for photographers by photographers. The next point where I don't think anybody is beating them at the moment is, as Nikon says, let there be more light. The new Z mount, the largest full frame mount on any camera system. Now, I guess we technically have to put a little asterisk that that's as of today, as of as of now, somebody could come along and, and make this uh, obsolete. They could make a bigger one tomorrow. But at the moment, Nikon's got it here. And uh, it's really exciting uh, what they're going to be able to do with this. I mean, we've got the Nikon uh, 58mm knocked 0.95 lens in the works. And just uh, chew on that number, 0.95 for a minute, and uh, you'll start to see uh, how amazing this Z-mount is. Now, those are the main advantages of Nikon. There's a bunch of other ones that aren't uh, necessarily as big, but there's still advantages. Uh, I mean, we've got an external battery charger. It's not really a minor thing. It's a huge pet peeve of mine. It drives me nuts that Sony and a lot of other manufacturers now, you have to plug in the camera with a USB cord. Uh, I like to have an external battery charger. Most of us have extra batteries, so having the external charger allows us to use the camera while we're charging our additional batteries. And it's also just, it, it seems cheap to me, especially of cameras of these levels, to not have a battery charger included. There's also a top LCD on the top. That's to me, is a big thing too. Um, that's nice. It's a status. Uh, you can see what's going on. And uh, for those of us that are coming from DSLRs, it's just, it's an advantage to have. And you, when you're missing it, you notice it. Um, higher frame rates. Uh, so that is definitely an advantage. Multiple exposures. Cleaner hot pixel correction algorithms. In other words, it's not a star eater. Um, there's more choices for RAW. 12-bit, 14-bit, lossless, compressed. So, you know, advantage there for Nikon. More choices. Uh, new um, sharpening controls. We got more levels of control. There's three levels of sharpening controls. And um, we also have the advantage that it doesn't uh, eat up pixels for the on-sensor IS. So we're looking at about 6,048 versus the 6,000, about 0.8%, Tom Hogan says, over on his site. Um, and Tom's got a really good write-up over on Sans Mir, um, listing a lot of the advantages for the Z6 versus the A7 at Mark III. And I had a good read through there, and you might want to check that out yourself. Um, but those are the main advantages for the Z6, as well as a bunch of other, what I would say are minor ones or lesser ones. So that's about 20 advantages in total, uh, probably about eight fairly significant ones, and then a whole slew of other ones that are definitely still advantages, just not as, I don't weight them as heavily as the other ones. Why you might want to buy the Z6 over the Sony a7 III. Uh, it's creating quite a stir and a heck of a camera, heck of a lens mount system. Uh, so um, what do you guys think? Uh, are those reasons why you would buy a Z6 over a Z, uh, uh, I was going to say a Z7, a Z6 over a Sony A7 Mark III, a Sony A7 III? Um, is there something I've left out that you think I should have included? What's the most significant for you? Is there one of those that is uh, the deal killer or the deal clincher for you? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. The Z6 advantages over the Sony A7 III. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it. Again, I'll put a link below. You can check it out. Tom's got a good article there um, listing um, the advantages and disadvantages, Sony versus Nikon in the new mirrorless. Uh, so you may want to check that out too. Um, looking forward to hearing your feedback in the comments below. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.